Yeah, Hi guys, I'm back again. And last time I posted a video about how I dropped out of ELX, the comments were wild. A lot of people were relating to it. I thought I was the only one that had dropped out. And I found out that there were trillions and trillions of people who had dropped out like me. Now today, we're going to be talking about what ELX course should you pursue? What ELX track should you pursue? Not everybody can be a software engineer, right? So ELX has five different exciting courses and we're going to be taking one, the AWS cloud practitioner i'm going to be showing you what it means where you can work why alx is providing it to you as a course how much you can earn and how long it will take you to complete what is aws aws simply means amazon web services amazon is so big that institutions have to train people to learn how to use their platform and the good thing is the aws cloud practitioner role is so in demand that if you get on it today and get competent, you can actually get a job in a very short time. And when I say job, I'm talking about job that pays in dollars, job that can actually lift you out of poverty, right? As an African, you may want to pay attention to that and maybe explore, you know, the AWS certification because not everybody really can be a software engineer. And of course, the AWS cloud practitioner, it doesn't really, doesn't really mean that you won't write code because it actually requires you to learn how to use Python and C but it's a different path. Now, Amazon Web Services offers a broad set of global cloud-based products that include servers, storage, analytics, security, developer tools, applications, and all of them are on demand. And what that means is they provide these things to companies and businesses as soon as companies want them. Why is ELX trying to get you to become a an AWS cloud practitioner and what's in it for you as a young person who is trying to get into tech. Now, in today's very digital world, a lot of companies are paying top dollar for their services to be hosted on the cloud. And when you think about the cloud, you think about AWS. Now, think about it like how you want to start a new website, right? You want to create your blog and, and all of that. And instead of writing the code for your blog from scratch, you go to Wix or you go to WordPress and all you need to do is to sign up, create a name, write your blogs, change the template and boom, you have a website. The alternative would be you learning how to write code, coding a site from scratch like people used to do in the 1990s and then launching everything yourself. So what Amazon is doing for businesses is to provide a platform for them to be able to use their own services and launch products that customers like you and I can actually use. Guess what? Companies don't have to build this platform themselves anymore. Companies can just go to Amazon Web Services, use the web services, launch their products, and voila, they're in the market. Now, another example would be if you wanted to import cars from, say, Belgium, right? And you wanted to import 100 cars, and you're doing this, like, say, once every six months. You need a warehouse to keep all your cars, right? So by the time you get to think about it, would you rather build your own warehouse from scratch, buy cement, pay for labor, get people, get licensing, get approval, grade the road, or would you just pay subscription to someone who already has a warehouse? I would choose the latter. And the reason is because it is cheaper, it is safer, it is faster. So this is exactly what Amazon Web Services is doing for micro businesses and large companies as well, allowing them to save money while using services that they would ordinarily have had to build all by themselves. So why is ALX providing it? The truth is, we all know that ALX is providing courses that are in demand in the tech world. And what is happening is that companies are paying top dollar, right? Amazon Web Services is currently in control of about 32% of the whole cloud market share. And that means that they pretty much control the whole internet. It's kind of like how Google controls web search space, right? So if you're getting into cloud, you have to think about AWS and cloud engineering is a thing right now and becoming a cloud practitioner provided by ALX is the next thing to do. Why should you take the course and how long would it cost you? If you've heard about it before, if you've never done anything regarding cloud engineering, DevOps, it would take you about 120 to 150 hours of studying to actually pass the certification on average, according to many people. And if you've been experienced a little bit, you would need just a few refreshers. It would take you about 
50 to 80 hours of constant studying. ALX is actually doing something unique. It, it's actually a scholarship. ALX is paying the fees because it's expensive to actually get the certification. ALX is paying the fees and putting you on the pipeline so you don't have to pay anything. However, you still have to pass though because you know, just like ALX now, they'll kick you out. They'll kick you out if you don't meet the requirements. So if you've not heard about cloud computing before, it may be, I'll break it down, right? Cloud computing in simple terms just means storing and accessing data and programs over the internet as against putting it down in your hard drive, right? So cloud computing is the ability to store and process and manage and extract data from cloud. And it's simple. However, you need some languages. You need to learn some programming languages for you to be able to communicate with the systems that store these data, that process them. And that's what it means to become a cloud computing professional. There are three kinds of cloud computing. There is infrastructure as a service, IWS. Um, and an example is Digital Ocean, Linode, and AWS, right? There is also the platform as a service, PWS. There is Oracle, or there is Google Cloud, which we all use right now. And again, guess what? There is AWS. And finally, there is software as a service. Software as a service are things like Gmail, Zoom, Netflix, and guess what? AWS. I think you can see where this is going. AWS is actually taking over the whole software infrastructure and platform market on the cloud. Now, let's go to the most important part of this video. How much can you earn as an AWS cloud practitioner? Now, if you have the certificates, the truth is your salary can actually increase exponentially, right? Um, as again, just learning how to write code. An AWS Cloud Practitioner Certificate can take you places. According to Zip Recruiter, the average annual pay for an entry-level AWS Cloud Practitioner in the US is $85,000 before tax, of course. And that's like $7,000 every month. Now, do me a favor, right? Convert that into your local currency and drop it in the comment below. Let me know how much it is in your currency in your country. Where can you work as an AWS cloud practitioner? You can be a cloud architect, you can be a cloud developer, you can be a systems engineer, you can be a systems administrator, you can be a DevOps engineer. These are, these are roles that are currently in demand. Sometimes you go to Glassdoor and then you type all these roles and then there's so many jobs and not a lot of people are applying for it. The reason is because it actually takes a lot of dedication to finish. It is not less difficult than the other courses you've been taking but is actually as rewarding or even more. So we're done with the ALX AWS Cloud Practitioner Program. I'll be talking about the Data Science Program in the next video, right? If you want to just make sure you see that, click on subscribe so that you don't get to miss it when I drop it. If you not watch the other videos, click here or here to see what's there for you.